हेलो एंड वेलकम टू मैथ सिंप्लीफाइड आई एम डॉक्टर उमर मलिक एंड आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग वेल इन दिस वीडियो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट टीनिया क्रूरिस बेटर नोन एज जॉकसिच टीनिया क्रूरिस और जॉकिच इज अ फंगल इन्फेक्शन दैट कॉजेज अ रेड स्केली एंड इची रैश इन वॉर्म मॉइस्ट एरियाज ऑफ द बॉडी द रैश ऑफन अफेक्ट्स द ग्रॉइन द इनर थाइज एंड इज यूजली शेप लाइक अ रिंग Jock itch gets its name because it's common in athletes. It's also common in people who sweat a lot or who are overweight. Although often uncomfortable and bothersome, jock itch is a very common condition and usually isn't serious. But keeping that in mind, never ignore any disease and always seek medical help at the earliest. Hence it is very important to treat it at an early stage. because if not treated in the early stages it becomes very difficult to treat later on as the topical drugs that are used for the treatment of normal fungal infections of the skin fail to act effectively at later stages of the disease fungi thrive in warm moist environments so this type of environment can cause them to naturally overpopulate the same fungi that cause nail infections athlete's foot and ringworm can cause jock itch These belong to a group of fungi known as the dermatophytes. Trichophyton is the most common dermatophyte involved in jock itch. Other dermatophytes that may be involved are epidermophyton and microsporum. Before we get into how to treat jock itch, let's first look at some of the factors that increase your risk of getting jock itch. Jock itch is especially common in summers and rainy seasons. because this leads to increased sweating and temperature which are ideal conditions for the fungi to grow if you wear tight fitting and synthetic clothes that occlude your body and prevent air circulation this also increases the risk of getting these fungal infections sharing towels or personal clothes with other people can also increase your risk personal hygiene is very important and habits like not bathing regularly and not bathing after strenuous workout sessions or exercise also increases the risk of getting these fungal infections if you have untreated fungal infections at other parts of your body the fungi can spread from those areas to the groin and cause an infection having a weak immune system or diabetes also increases your risk of getting jock itch Now let's talk about how jock itch or tinea cruris presents and what symptoms you can develop. Jock itch is typically found in the groin, inner thighs or the anal region. Also it can be located on the lower abdominal area. Symptoms include itching and burning, a red scaly circular rash with raised edges, scaling, flaking or peeling of skin in the infected region. The rash usually begins with a reddish area of skin in the crease of the groin. It often spreads to the upper thigh in a half moon shape. The rash is usually ring shaped and can also have small blisters. It may burn or feel itchy and the skin may be flaky or scaly. If you visit a dermatologist, they can confirm the diagnosis by performing a few simple tests. The first basic test usually done is skin scraping test. The doctor scrapes the edges of the rash and observes it under the microscope to check for the presence of fungi. These skin scrapings can also be sent for fungal culture test. In most cases, the dermatologists can easily identify jock itch and they can promptly start the treatment without any tests. Now let's look at some lifestyle modifications you can implement that will help you to prevent jock itch in the first place. Keep your groin area dry. Dry your genital area and inner thighs thoroughly with a clean towel after showering or exercising. Also remember to dry your feet after taking a bath. Wear clean clothes. Change your underwear at least once a day or more often if you sweat a lot. Undergarments made of cotton or other fabrics that absorb moisture and keep the skin dry also help to prevent this infection. Always remember to wash your workout clothes after each use. Make sure your clothes fit correctly, especially your undergarments. Avoid tight fitting clothes which can rub and irritate your skin and put you at an increased risk of jock itch. Try wearing boxer shorts rather than briefs. 
Don't share personal items. Don't let others use your clothing, towels or other personal items. Also don't borrow such items from others. Control any athlete's foot infection to prevent its spread to the groin area. Now, if we look at the treatment itself, it can be divided into topical antifungals which are applied over the skin and oral medication. Topical medications include soaps, body washes, lotions, creams and gels. We will look at them one by one and see which one is best for you. Topical antifungals are the first line of treatment for the patients of jock itch. The most effective topical antifungals include drugs like azoles, which include clotrimazole, ketoconazole, oxiconazole, and sertraconazole. Another very effective category of drugs are allylamines like terbinafen and butanafen. And there are some newer antifungal drugs also like cyclopirox and selenium sulfide, which are proving to be very effective for the treatment of jock itch. You can start the treatment with a soap or body wash containing clotrimazole 1% or ketoconazole 2% and use that to wash your body every day. When you apply the soap or the body wash, make sure to leave it on for a few minutes before you wash it off so as to have the maximum antifungal effect. You can also use cyclopiroxolamine or selenium sulfide body washes. Next, we move on to the antifungal creams, gels or lotions you should use. Again, similar antifungal drugs are present in these creams and lotions like ketoconazole 2%, clotrimazole 1%, laliconazole 1%, iberconazole or sertaconazole. Selenium sulfide 2.5% lotion and cyclopirox 1% cream are also very effective. You should apply these creams and lotions twice daily once in the morning and once before sleeping. I have provided the links to some of the best antifungal soaps, body washes, creams and lotions in the description box down below, so make sure to check them out. As per my experience as a dermatologist, I have found laliconazole 1% cream, selenium sulfide and cyclopiroxolamine creams to be quite effective in the treatment of jock itch. The treatment with these topical drugs should be continued for a minimum of 4 weeks if you have a mild infection and if you have a severe infection involving larger areas of the groin, upper thighs or abdomen, you should continue the topical treatment for at least 6 to 8 weeks. Oral antifungal drugs are indicated in the case of extensive involvement of the skin and in patients who fail to respond to the topical therapy such as creams and lotions. Now there are three main FDA approved antifungal drugs for the treatment of tinea cruris. These are terbinafine, itraconazole and fluconazole. These drugs act by inhibiting certain enzymes in the fungi that are important for the fungi to synthesize their cell wall. Without a proper cell wall, these fungi cannot grow and they soon die out. Out of these three, fluconazole is mainly indicated for the treatment of vaginal candidiasis oropharyngeal and esophageal candidiasis, while itraconazole and terbinafen are mainly used for the treatment of tinea and we will focus on them. Itraconazole is available in 100mg, 200mg and 400mg doses. For tinea cruris, usually 100mg twice a day or 200mg once a day for 2 weeks is the minimum you should take this drug. Terbinafine is given as 250mg tablet daily for 2-4 to four weeks. These drugs are usually not available over the counter, so you need a prescription from a dermatologist. While undergoing this treatment, make sure to take proper care of your hygiene and wash your clothes regularly with hot water. Also make sure to iron your undergarments before each use as many of the times these fungal spores can get deposited on our inner wear clothes and this can cause frequent relapses and treatment failures. So that was all about jaw cage and its treatment. In the coming videos we will discuss about tinea pedis, tinea capitis and many other topics related to fungal infections as these are very common in the today's population. Also, I am going to make some videos regarding home remedies and natural methods to treat tinea infections. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on those videos.
Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like this video and also share with someone who you think might find it useful. Bye bye and see you in the next video.